Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. We are getting on now with our Bomber of the World aircraft. It's a video series where we just talk about, well, Bombers of the World. Now, it all originates from this picture and I have to give credit. We got it from P Interest, a website compiled by A13X, whoever that is. I don't know who you are, but I love you because you're awesome. Um, and we're also doing Fighters of the World, Attack Aircraft of the World and stuff like this. But we're on Bombers today and we've done videos one two three and we're on four today so it's this column over here we're looking at and what we do is we just talk about the history a few facts about the aircraft and um, and whatnot now our usual disclaimer we are not military experts we're not trying to be we're just enthusiasts that like talking about stuff we get our internet from the, uh, sorry our information for the same places as you internet books whatever uh right so this crack oh i've got the lovely uh golden mouth soames here say hello soames hello hello <laughs> there he is Right, so we're going to crack on with it. Uh, a quick overview of what we're looking at today. TU-14, we've got the TU-16 Badger, we've got the TU-22, and the TU... Ah, oh, hmm, this is interesting. Different versions of the TU-22. I already know that. didn't. I didn't know that because this is already, so that's going to be interesting. Um, we've got the TU-22 M3. We've obviously got Ear and DCS. We did a mission escort in those the other day. No, shooting them down, in fact. TU-95 Bear. We did a mission shooting them down not too long ago. TU-124, which is also a Bear question mark, so that's going to be interesting to talk about. 160, which we did last night. We escorted two of those and shot one down. And then back to England, we've got Vickers, then Zion. Never heard of it. Yakolev, never heard of it. So we're going... Oh, it's Yak. Yakolev is it's just Yakolev Yak. It must be, mustn't it? It is, yeah, yeah Yak. Right. Yeah. Okay, I've heard of it then. So we're going to crack on. First of all, TU-14 Boson. I don't know anything about it. First observation, so I can see that we have probably an engine on each wing, and I'm guessing late 40s, early 50s. When are we in history for this? Uh, this was introduced in 1952 and then retired in 1959. 59, so in that, uh, relatively long service history for that time in history, obviously. Things were changing so fast. It wasn't unusual to have uh, you know lifespans of two years for aircraft. Okay, so no, no, I can't have seen any service then in that case, because Russia wasn't involved in anything, was it? So it's um, uh, their first jet bomber, question mark? Maybe a bit late for that? Uh, it could well be a Soviet twin and a twin turbo light bomber. Um, well, not the first, um, but uh, it was predominantly used by Soviet naval aviation as opposed to Soviet air force. Roger, okay. It looks almost from the side, almost B-17 esque, or bits of it anyway. But okay, it was a rear. I'm guessing that's a rear gunner. Yeah, that must be a rear gunner at the back, wasn't it? It is, yeah, and uh, I thought the same. Looks very uh, sort of flying fortressy, mm. especially the tailplane. I thought, um, and then you look at the engines and the wings. Mm. Um, very long wings, very thin wings, mm -hmm. um, and when you look at it in plan form, it you kind of see similarities between this and the Canberra. I think. Ah, yeah. Now you mention it, let me just check if I've got him here somewhere. Canberra, Canberra, Canberra. There he is. So there's a Canberra, one of the best bombers ever, uh, ever made. And that's English, obviously. I know the Americans will claim it, but it was actually English. And let's compare that. Yeah, it's the same. Certainly, it's the same size, same time in history, same layout in terms of wing, same layout in terms of engine. In fact, it's almost a direct copy, but with uh, uh, gun emplacements added, basically. Well, I shouldn't say it's a direct copy. I don't know that at all. But anyway, being British, that's what I'm going to say. Um, okay, that's interesting. Uh, can we talk about the engines? Is it two of them? What are they? And what power do they generate? Yeah, two um, Klimov VK1s, uh, which I think are derivatives of the Rolls-Royce Rolls -Royce Neen or Derwent engines. Mm. I can't remember which one. Yeah. Uh, those are basically unlicensed copies. And I think, uh, I might be wrong here, those were used in the Canberra as well. Ah, interesting. Yeah, they were the Neens. They copied it for the MiG-15, turned it into whatever they turned it into. Okay, and what power is she kicking out? Uh, Power-wise, we're looking at 5,950 pounds feet of thrust each. Okay, going to be pretty slow in that case then. Um, I know speed isn't particularly important for a bomber, well, you know, in, in, in this time, but um, what top speed did she have? A top speed, 529, 529 miles per hour. Not too bad, Mach 0.6 or something, I suppose. Okay, and what do we have? Mach 7, maybe? Uh, what was her ceiling? Ceiling, uh, 36,745 feet. Okay, pretty weak. And payload, please. Uh, the payload, uh, what have we got? We've got up to 6,610 pounds of bombs, mines, or torpedoes. As I say, predominantly used by Soviet naval, naval, mm. uh, naval aviation, so mainly torpedoes. Okay. It's weird. I didn't think they were really doing naval, naval at this point in history, but I guess, I guess they were. I just didn't know about it. Um, okay, interesting. Anything else interesting about the TU-14? 
Uh, I don't think so. As I say, engines, uh, unlicensed copy of the Rolls-Royce Neen. Uh, interestingly, <laughs> the Soviets then licensed that engine mm. uh, to China. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, interesting. Mm. Right, TU-14 Boson, something I didn't, didn't know exists, and now I know it did exist. Right, now we're going to move on to TU-16 Badger. So, things I noticed, I don't know really anything about the Badger, I know of its existence. But uh, well, one thing I'd point out, NATO names for Russian bombers always start with a B, you know, Boson, Badger, Blinder, Backfire, Bear, and so on, uh, Blackjack. Um, I notice uh, sweep in the wings, so we're going, we're obviously later on in time, we've got a faster top speed, and it looks like two engines still, but they're going to be bigger. They've still got a rear gunner. When are we in history for the Badger, please, service history? So this one was introduced in 1954 and retired in uh, 1993. Wow. Um, yeah, it's significant sort of operational history and it's been exported all around the world as well. Okay. So it's a very, very successful airframe. Nice. Okay, remotely controlled uh, guns, top, bottom, and probably human gunner at the back by the looks of it. I mean... The thing is, when you have uh, aircraft of that long a lifespan, you obviously have different versions. So they start off like what we're looking at here, and the latest one in the 90s is probably very different, kind of similar to the B-52 or something like that. But okay, um, do you know what are we looking at? An area a earlier variant with the facts that we're talking about, the facts and figures, or are we looking at the latest variant just out of interest? Uh, um, facts and figures. Uh, let's have a look for you. So it just says TU-16, got no information about facts and figures and what it's relevant to, unfortunately. I'm just going to assume it's the early one. So uh, just another thing I've noticed, uh, along with swept wing, so you, can, you can see it's a kind of relatively early style of swept wing because we've got the, um, the whopping great wing fences, MiG-15-esque wing fences to stop slippage. So um, it seems to be a characteristic of 50s swept wings and early understanding, uh, early understanding of aerodynamics so that's interesting um why shall we start what engines have we got in this puppy so we've got two michelin uh, am3 uh, m500 turbojets uh producing twenty one thousand pounds of feet of thrust each wow that's see the difference between that and the means above more than four times the amount of power um so it's amazing and just just a few years well literally two years uh, 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 later uh, yeah, incredible. significant, significant. Although saying that caveat, there's always the chance, because it's a long service life, it may be later engines that we're talking about, but okay, we just have to assume they're not for the time being. Is it just two of them, yeah? Yep, just two. Okay. Um, now, has this, do we know if we've got any active history, any, um, you know what I mean, war history with this thing? Uh, yes. Afghanistan. Quite. Afghanistan, uh, definitely Afghanistan, Iraq used them uh, in the Iraq-Iran mm. war. Uh, the Iraqi forces were actually destroyed during Operation Desert Storm. I guess that was pretty much all ground stuff. Yeah. Uh, Indonesia used them um, during preparation for Operation Trikara, where they were looking to capture Western New Guinea from the Netherlands, um, it being an uh, ex-colony. Egypt used them all over the place. Uh, the Biafran conflict, yeah, it's significant. Um, interestingly, less so with Russia. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Probably a good thing. Okay, fine. Um, let's go into some more figures then. What kind of bomb load are we at uh, this, with this thing? It can carry 20,000 pounds of freefall bombs or uh, a whole bunch of missiles. Two KS-1s or one KS-10 or two KSR-5. What's the poundage of the bombs? 20,000 pounds. 20,000 pounds, yeah. So, pretty yeah. so this seems to me to be a direct, direct response if a little underclass to the B-52. So the B-52 is 1952, swept wings, you know, Mach 0.6, Mach 0.7, heavy, heavy bomb load in that thing. So I'm guessing this was a response. It's literally designed two years after or, or employed two years after, but obviously not on the same scale. Uh, can we have ceiling and top speed, please, for what it's worth? Sure. Uh, top speed was 652 miles per hour or 567 knots. Mm -hmm. The service ceiling was 42,000 feet. So it's Mach 0.75 or something. And sorry, the service something ceiling? Like what was the service ceiling? It's, uh, 42,000 right, feet. So we're going up, but it's still relatively low, isn't it? It's, well, in my reckoning anyway. But 
Okay, fair enough. It is. It is for, strate uh, for a strategic mm. bomber. It is quite low. Uh, a lot of these were converted, though, to again, sort of naval operations mm. uh, and to carry. I mean, those missiles I mentioned earlier. I think they were all anti-ship missiles. Mm. Uh, they are. They are all anti-ship missiles. So, uh, again, form part of the Soviet doctrine of denying the Atlantic to both America and northern uh, sort of Europe. Interesting. Do we have um, a service range on this thing out of interest? The range is about 4,474 miles. That is impressive. That is quite impressive. And this is, again, a kind of doctrine of, of Russia. Obviously, the planes in general have to have, to have large service ranges just because of the geography. Um, indeed, indeed. I mean, Soviet sort of doctrine in the late uh, 80s, uh, sort of early sort of 70s, was all about sort of um, if there was an invasion into Western Europe, they would want to s stop as much help coming from uh, the United States as possible mm. and he's all part of their sort of naval doctrine of the Northern Atlantic at the time Cool, alright very good um, anything else you want to mention about the Badger? I think that's it for me uh, I think I've mentioned a significant sort of um, export um, yeah, very good very, very respected airframe. Yeah, Roger okay, right, let's jump on to the TU-22s, now I'll, I'll, I don't know much of that at all, but I'll just go from my spot, very spotted history, and then you can start speaking the facts. So I think there was the TU-22, well, I think there were three variants. Um, so we've got the TU-22K blinder here. Obviously, you've got two engines on top of the fuselage, and the, the latest final version, the, 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 the backfire here with the two engines in the fuselage and the kind of F-15 type intakes and they must have been I'm guessing 60s and they must have been response to the things like the Hustler and you know we're talking Mach 2 bombers from NATO um, I, I assume that's what we're going to find other than that this version here is in DCS they're very impressive very fast they're hard to shoot down with fighters because they're so fast and I guess that's kind of what it was all about but let's start going into the facts let's start with a blinder if we can when was this in history and was it prototype or was it actually built properly so no, it was built properly. Uh, it was there's 311 built, oh, uh, nice. and it was produced in 1960. Introduced in 1962, mm -hmm. um, it was actually produced during 90, or from 1960 to 69, mm -hmm. and it was retired in Libya uh, as late as uh, the early 2000s. Interesting. Okay, so there was a lot of them. They were used in different countries. So, first thing I want to talk about is, is that a sweepable wing? Because the, the backfire is a sweepable wing. Is the blinder a sweepable wing or a fixed wing? No, fixed wing. It's got quite a swept wing, though. It's about 55 degrees, if I remember yeah, so correctly. That, so, so, it's fixed. So, this is just designed to go fast and bomb things. What top speed do we have on it? Top speed uh, is 930 miles per hour or Mach 1.42. Yeah, so we're getting pretty fast for a big old bird like this, and in the 60s, that's pretty impressive. What about the engines? What have we got here? We've got two Dobrinin RD7M2 turbojets, uh, producing 24,300 pounds feet of drive thrust, uh, but with the afterburner going 36,400 pounds wow. feet. Is that each? Each, indeed, Jeez, yeah, each. That is powerful motors. Wow. So that's 70,000 pounds combined. Okay. Uh, do we have an altitude and payload on this thing? Yes. Uh, so the service ceiling was forty-three thousand. Sorry, yeah, forty-three thousand six hundred feet, mm -hmm. uh, and its payload was twenty thousand pounds worth of bombs, or uh, a single KH twenty-two stroke AS four kitchen cruise missile oh, kitchen. again anti-ship. We. I don't know yeah. if you saw our video. We used that a couple of missions ago. Our first. I did. I did. Thoroughly enjoyed and it. There, Thanks. There, there, there was. They. We lined them up. You didn't see it in the video. We lined it up to a Hornet, and it was the same size as a Hornet. Unbelievable missile that thing. It weighed six and a half tons. And you can see why it can only take one of them. Bloody amazing thing. Great missiles. Right. Um, oh, okay. So we've got uh, all moving uh, elevons at the back there. That's interesting. Um, I'm guessing that's a crew of. Do we know the crew size in this? Uh, three pilot, navigator, and a weapons officer. Okay. I still think it's quite impressive for the time, this thing. I think it is. Again, it's sort of like, like a lot of these aircraft. There are some sort of I don't know, uh, interesting details. The engine placement, for example, mm. very, very sort of um, yeah, interesting designs. Yeah, I don't know what the engine uh, engine what it is about putting engines above the fuselage. To me, it's just a massive pocket of drag. But uh, I guess it's to increase bomb load, or you know, there's obviously some interesting 
design. I imagine, yeah, centre of gravity is where you play a part as well. Uh, put the engines at the back, you can put more bombs at the front. Yeah, cool. All right, interesting plane. We may one day get it in. It's the kind of plane I could see coming to DCS one day, but we'll have to see. Anything you want to add to the blinder? No, no, I think that's everything from me. Sounds good. Right, then we move on to the backfire. Super successful. You're still running them. Going to have a massive history, but I don't really... So when did it start for the backfire? So this was introduced in service in 1972. Nice. And obviously, as you say, still in service today. Yeah, so that is a successful plane. Really successful. So that's another... Yeah, they're using them in Syria when they were bombing in Syria and whatnot. Okay, so what we do know is they've got two whopping great turbofans. Their wings are sweepable, so we can change the pitch of the wings, the sweep of the wings, all moving elevons at the back. Whopping great tail fin. Don't know why it's so big and complicated, but it is. Um, so this drops... Talk, let's talk about it's what service it's seen in action. I'm guessing Afghanistan and Syria. but uh, Yeah, Afghanistan, I think it was it. Chechnya, it was used in um, South Ossetia War. Um, yeah, there's sort of like just the usual sort of uh, the Russian skirmishes around. I'm trying to look for, yeah, in Afghanistan as well. That's pretty much it, though. And the other thing is, is you kind of take for granted the size of the bloody thing. If you zoom out, and you can see it's it's nearing on B-52 size. It's possibly even bigger than the B-1. It really is an impressive piece of kit. Um, okay, let's talk about some facts and figures. Do we have a payload of this thing? Yeah, payload. Uh, what have we got? We have got, uh, so 53,000 pounds wow. worth of bombs. So big, big, big. Yeah, so again, all the usual missiles there, uh, KH-32 missile, KH-15s, KH-47s, uh, can carry mines, oh, yeah, it's got wing and fuselage pylons and an internal weapons bay as well, so, so yeah, the good armament. In, the difference in um, uh, uh, payload in 10 years, 1962 with the blind at uh, £20,000, 1972 with the backfire, £50,000, so it's two and a half you know times bigger payload so impressive the engineering goes into it on obviously that's uh, wings as well but uh, yeah obviously as in the belly as well okay interesting um can we talk about the engines and the top speed please sure we've got two kuznets off nk25 turbo fans uh the speed is mac 1.88 uh or 1280 miles per hour altitude 30,000 feet um service ceiling is 43,600 feet what about what the, the power of those turbo fans? Oh, the turbo fans, fifty-five thousand one hundred pounds feet of thrust each. Wow, fifty-five thousand. Huge. <laughs> I didn't know engines got that powerful. Like in turbo. <laughs> I didn't either. Small That's bypass massive. form. That's interesting. Wow, I'd love to see one of these. That is going to blow your ears to pieces. Yeah, I'd like to hear it. I must yeah, say. One hundred ten thousand pounds. Wow. Okay, that's quite impressive. So. um Right, I'm starting to like this plane more. Mat 1.9 almost, that's faster than a Hornet. That's just impressive all round. Uh, what crew have we got in this? I see windows aft of the you know, main canopy. Yep, crew of four, pilot, co-pilot, navigator and weapon systems officer. I guess navigators must be superfluous now. You literally bung a GPS on that thing. Like a 100 pound Garmin. <laughs> I would have thought so. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure how, how, what, what the navigate. Yeah, I mean, I guess if they're using missiles as well, it's all going to be INS guided and GPS, mm -hmm. as you say. So, yeah, navigator these days, don't know. Mm. Um, well, just out of interest, you probably won't be able to answer this. There's a little thing sticking out the back. I wonder if that's a gun, radar guided gun or something. I don't suppose we've got any information on that. It is. Uh, it's a remote controlled tail turret uh, with a GSH 23 cannon in it. Oh, I know GSH because, uh, yep, because I've just uh, done one on a uh, aeroplane, but I can't remember what it is. L39, yeah, 23 mil auto cannon. Very nice. That's gonna yeah, be, yeah, very interesting. Shoot some F16s now. Okay, so there's that. Uh, rah, 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 rah. Anything else you can think of about the backfire? No, I'm just sort of reading a few bits and pieces here. Apparently, it's quite a pig to fly, uh, especially <laughs> <No> landing. <laughs> yeah. look, look at the uh, look at the visibility out of the windscreen. Nothing you can see. Nothing. Indeed, indeed. And as, as I understand it, it, it yeah, one of the big problems was tail strike when you were bringing the thing down. 
Yeah, that's a dangerous bay. Obviously, we have it in DCS, but we can't fly it. We can only use it as an AI, kind of low fidelity, low detail model. But it's still impressive, just the sheer bruteness of it. It's hard to shoot down that thing. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? It really is. It is very cool. Well done, Russia. Cool. Okay, anything else before we move on? Uh, no, no, that's it for me. Okay, so we're going to the TU-95 Bear. This is what I've always thought of as the equivalent of the B-52. Big, um, slightly or moderately swept wing, relatively low speed, uh, but a big payload and can go a long way, um, which is, again, what the B-52 was about. So, um, I just had an interest, actually. Back to the T-22, the, uh, the backfire. I notice, again, we've got a really low service ceiling of 43,000 feet, which is really weird. Do we have a, a, a service range again on it, just out of interest? On the T-22? Uh... Back on the backfire, yeah. We've got a range of can't, can't service, uh, 3,000 miles. Yeah, I thought it couldn't be that good because you, you see a big fighter at the end of the day, big after-burning engines and a not particularly efficient wing. So, yeah, so I guess that's why it doesn't go particularly high. Instead, it goes fast and not very far. So now we're going to come to the oppo opposite doctrine. We're going to get a plane now that doesn't go very fast, or particularly fast, but it's probably going to go very high and very far, I imagine. So the bear... Um, when are we in history with the 95 Bear? So this was introduced uh, in 1956, and as we know, still in service today. We yeah. keep seeing them on the east coast of the UK um, yeah. frequently. Again, like the B-52, incredibly successful. So, let's talk about some facts and figures. What, uh, what range have we got out of this thing out of interest? Uh, so max range is uh, 9,400 yeah, miles. That's like halfway around Unrefueled, of course. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Massive. Hugely efficient engines. So the engines, I'm guessing, are turbo, not turbo fan, turbo prop. They are four Kuznetsov NK12 turbo props uh, with contra rotating propellers. As you'll see, you can see there's like yeah. two, so two the, propellers per, per the, engine there. So the smallest one goes one way, the bigger one behind goes the other way. No idea why that's that it. is, but obviously you get some sort of extra efficiency in some way or another. And I've been told by people who've stood near this thing that it's one of the loudest planes in the world because of well some effect that that, that propeller must give acoustically it is uh, apparently the tips of the propeller spin yeah. so fast they exceed the sound of, uh, the speed of sound so every sort of every time it sweeps around you're going to get a little sonic crack it's going to be noisy it's interesting because you shouldn't be able to phys physics says that a propeller shouldn't be able to do that and just still generate not lift but you know thrust um, so they must have some trick. Maybe it's something to do with the propeller in front or something. Must precondition the air or something like that. It's interesting. I'd like to know more about the bear. In fact, yeah, you guys know more about us anyway. Viewing, you let us know how they achieve that, not have their propellers fly to pieces. Okay. Um, is it so? Is a, a engine like this measured in horsepower or thrust? It must be shaft horsepower, I imagine. It is shaft horsepower. Fourteen thousand eight hundred shaft horsepower, or if you Yikes. want to use metric, eleven thousand kilowatts. 14,000, that is a lot of cars worth of power. It's actually quite impressive. Um, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. Okay, so it's pretty powerful. Yeah, one way or another, isn't it? Compare that to a Merlin or something. 1,500 horsepower. It's, yeah, really good. Okay, so pretty cool engines. you got a wing sweep of what? 20, mid 20s degrees? Up to 30, maybe? Uh, I'd, I'd put it around the 20s. Um, I've got no information here, but yeah, I'm guessing about 20 to 30. Okay, so it goes 9,000. So what's the altitude? What's the ceiling? It's service ceiling, uh, 45,000 feet. Hmm. Okay. I mean, that's a service ceiling. Obviously, I don't max ceiling. Totally different. I mean, service ceiling is all about sort of how much you can yeah. climb in a certain speed and all that. Ag agreed. But I use it comparatively. And I remember the 52 is, I believe, a lot higher than that, but maybe I'm wrong. I been a long time. Okay, uh, bomb load, please, in poundage. We got, we got 33,000 pounds of missiles or bombs. Interesting, that's less than the backfire. Mm, it, it is, it's it is. skinny body, though, isn't it? One thing I've noticed about this is that it's a real skinny bod on it. Must be something to do with in flight efficiency, but... Hmm. Yeah, it's obviously... Yeah, yeah, it's very thin, very thin fuselage on there. Mm, okay. Uh, do we have a top speed on it? Speed-wise, we're looking at 575 miles per hour. Pretty crap. That's what uh, 500 knots Mac. I don't know, 0.6 or something like that. Okay, so it's slow. It goes a long way. It's incredibly efficient. It carries a moderately good amount of bombs, and it's very successful. Uh, do we know what conflict it's been in? 
so obviously Cold War big big sort of uh, role in the Cold War mm -hmm. particularly the sort of electronic versions um, don't know about actual service though um, can't see much information there but I would imagine Afghanistan would have been a factor mm -hmm. South Ossetia um, all the usual sort of places yeah Afghanistan from what I know and I don't know much about it but it was generally uh, you know you're not carpet bombing in Af in Afghanistan it was generally picking on small targets mainly helicopters and small bombers I didn't really think they were doing kind of bear type of bombing but um, I may be wrong obviously uh, no, I suspect their sort of use over there again was electronic warfare or mm -hmm. reconnaissance um, that seems to be the sort of primary use today is, is electronic warfare. I mean, I know that they use them for ELINT purposes. As I say, we often see them approaching the um, east coast of the UK. Mm -hmm. It's all about sort of understanding radar and, and working out mm -hmm. intelligence gathering. And I guess the reason why we see these and not backfires is because of their range. And that's their, that's their trump card, isn't it? Precisely. Because of the geography of Russia, this is the thing that can just fly over, right over Europe to England or whatever. Hmm, interesting. You've got a rear gunner, on, at least on the version we're seeing, the version H. Cool. I still, I think, I still think it's a cool plane. Um, anything you want to add to it? Uh, no, I don't think so. It, uh, it's got, obviously got a refueling probe in the front. Any idea what would refuel this? Another bear? That's all I can think of. I, I, this is the only thing I can think of as well, Cap, is another bear. It's going to be something which has got the legs and also the capacity. Yeah. Right, right. Right, let's move on to the TU-142. Now, I don't know why it's lower down in the kind of list. It usually uh, means that would be newer. No, I don't know why it is. Um, I don't know anything about the 142. I thought it was even not called a bear. I thought it was something else. It's obviously ever so slightly smaller. Other than that, don't know about it. When are we in history and what this? what is this all about? So, first flight was uh, in 1968, introduced in 1972. Uh Users with the Russian Navy, a Soviet Navy, and also the Indian Naval Air Arm. Um, it is uh, out of production at the moment, but mm. still in service. Primary use anti uh, submarine warfare. Right, so this is a naval bear by the sounds of it. It is, it is. It's slightly longer, uh, and you can see it's got some sort of um, um, electronic equipment in the belly there. Yeah. Yep. So that's and also, your submarines and stuff, I'm guessing. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's probably going to be uh, a magnet magnetic anomaly detector, mm -hmm. or MAD mm -hmm. system, as they call it. Um, and it's also going to have uh, various sonar boy launchers and, mm -hmm. and a lot of the things like the old Nimrod used to have. Yeah, cool. We've done the Nimrod. Nimrod, you know, that'll be under a different one. We've done the Victor, but not the Nimrod. Interesting. Okay, that's an interesting bit. Right, so now I know a 142 in DCS is a naval, essentially a naval version of a bear. How interesting. Okay, anything other of interest on the 142? Uh, crew, obviously, massive, 11 to 13. Wow. Um, there's a lot of people required to do the ASW sort of work. So you've got guys um, sitting at radar screens and stuff, analysing data, I suppose. Indeed, indeed, yeah. Um, uh, slightly different service ceiling, 39,000 feet, combat radius, 3,900 miles, max speed, 5.7 5 again. For some reason, it carries much less fuel, but that's interesting. I wonder what kind of ordnance it deploys on on naval stuff then. I've got. I'm trying to look at some um, armament stuff. I've got no information, but I would imagine it's going to be torpedoes, mm -hmm. um, sonar boys, and I would be surprised if there aren't nuclear torpedoes in there somewhere. <laughs> right. Okay. Interesting. Cool. All right. Uh, let's move on to the big bitch. This is the mother. Uh, of actual bombers. I know there's some bigger ones here that never really made it into service. Uh, what, what was this chap called? The Bounder? Did the Bounder? I don't, I don't think the Bounder made it into service. And uh, I can't remember that section we did. Uh, and the Valkyrie never made it into service, obviously. So this is probably the most physically impressive not plane in the world, maybe, with SR-71 and stuff, but bomber in the world, at least. It's, uh, it's an enlarged version of the B-1, I like to think it has. So the Americans did the B-1A, which never went into service. And I'm assuming the Russian counter to that was the Tu-160 Blackjack. And then the um, the T, uh, sorry, the sorry, B-1 then ca actually came into service as the B-1B, a kind of downsized, down-tuned version of it. But they never really down-tuned the T-160. The it was just a really massive, fast, impressive piece of kit. Don't know any figures about it, but we'll find out. It is a sweet, has a sweepable wing. That's kind of a modern blended fuselage wing. Lifting body. 
similar to the B1 supersonic long range bomber. Got them in DCS and they're very impressive again. So let's start talking. When was this thing designed and built? So it was first flew in 1981, introduced service in 1987, and is still in service today. Um, and there was 36 built, nine prototypes, and there's ah. 27 serial aircraft. How interesting! I know Russia lost a lot of these in the in the Soviet split with Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine kept about 12 of them or something, and a big deal had to be struck to buy them back or swap them or something like that. A long time ago, so I can't remember, but. Okay, that's interesting. So, right, early 80s. Okay, that sounds about right. Uh, let's go through some and long service history. Do we know when it's seen action? I bet this thing saw action in Syria. Operational, let's have a look. Operational history. Um, Maybe a bit late for Afghanistan. It might be, actually, yeah. It doesn't seem to be much operational history. Um, the one of most uh, one the use the usage which is most notable um, is recently these were seen over in Venezuela ah. uh, with all the issues that they've got going on over there. Yeah. Um, and I think they may have been involved in in, in uh, allegedly moving gold out of the country. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I think um, I mean this 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 thing is obviously designed at the the closing of the cold war this is a cold war toy um you know it's upstaging the b1 it's it's i think it's more of a symbol than designed to actually go and bomb people's houses we've got this bigger faster nastier jet and a kind of projecting power type weapon i i imagine it is and hence it hasn't actually got much history because it's probably not actually the yet that useful in terms of the amount of money it must cost to keep it in the air it must be unbelievable and the technology inside it. Um, out of interest, because we are interested, let's talk about some facts and figures. So we've got, uh, what bomb load have we got in the thing, first of all? Oh, mate, we've got two internal weapons bays mm. um, for 99,208 pounds of ordnance. Wow. That's massive. 100,000 pounds of ordnance. I think that is the biggest in the world, question mark. Um, I, as far as I can see on this list, it is anyway. So already that is just over top the charts. Okay, let's see if we yeah. can top the charts with the engines. What have we got there? Uh, engines. What have we got? We have got four Samara NK three two one turbofans, uh, each producing thirty thousand eight hundred sixty five pounds feet of dry thrust, or fifty five thousand one hundred fifty pounds feet of thrust with afterburner. So similar, so similar or same engines as the Backfire, but he's got. Four of them in this case, so that is 220,000, quarter of a million pounds of thrust nearly, uh, which is, I can't think of anything more bigger or more powerful than that. So I can't it, seems, either, it appears to top the, that scale as well. So it's basically two backfires stuck together in terms of engine. Uh, ridiculous. Uh, can we go for service ceiling and top speed, please? Uh, service ceiling, 51,181 feet. Cool. Top speed, Mach 2.05 or 1,200 knots. Unbelievable. So this is what I was saying about the B1A. This one here was designed to be a Mach 2 plane, but it was so expensive to, to, to make a plane like that. You've got to, I don't know, I don't know the details. You've probably got to cover it in titanium and stuff like that. It's going to be get very expensive to run and build. And the it, it did make it to fruition and service, but only in a detuned version of Mach 1.8. Three or so, back 1.25, I think maximum for the B1B, uh, and so it's down-tuned, smaller, lighter engines uh, and whatnot. But the Russians never detuned theirs; they kept it to max. So Mac over Mac 2, it's almost unbelievable. A thing bigger than a B52 going Mac 2. It's just, um, yeah, the Russians definitely did something right there, and must garner a lot of respect all over the world. Um, okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, what haven't we talked about about it? We've done payload, speed, height, service history. I'd like to talk about it more, but I don't. I can't think of anything. What kind of crew have we got in here? We've got we've got a crew of four. Uh, the uh, pilot, co-pilot, bombardier, and defensive systems officer. I wonder what defensive systems is. Maybe an onboard jammer, flare and chaff. Um, maybe stuff we don't know about. I don't really know. Yeah, I would imagine it's all sorts of different. Bands of jammer um, in the uh, sort of ECM stuff. Mm. And this for for uh, uh, we're not petrol heads, are we? For aviation heads like us, this is the great thing about the Cold War. It 
forced countries to produce you know pieces of art like this that they would never have uh, have produced otherwise and like we said it hasn't actually gone and bombed anyone so that side of things it's great as well it's just a, it's just an amazing piece of technology that they're too expensive to get rid of now i suppose but yeah wicked we shall never see one like it again soames i don't so, think we will i don't think we will yeah so long may she continue Right, goodbye then for now. Uh, we're going to down tune a bit now. We're going to go to the Vickers now. Um, I'll, I know very little about the Valiant, but I will give it my shot first of all. So, late 40s, I think. Specification for three V bombers for the British to go and drop nuclear, the recently acquired nuclear bombs on Moscow. Uh, uh, planes designed to take off pretty much a one way mission, drop one or more nuclear bombs on, on Russia. And maybe return back to base if there's one left, or just uh, ditch in the sea otherwise. Uh, the Vulcan, the Victor, and the Valiant. And all I can remember is it had a slightly swept wing, and it was probably the worst of the three, but you're probably going to correct me on that. What do we know about the Valiant, Soames? Okay, so, uh, yeah, introduced 1955, retired 1965, only had a 10-year lifespan. Mm. Um, That's short. So, I mean, what happened? It, very short. Uh, it was in 1964 they discovered that it was suffering from metal fatigue um, or into crystalline corrosion and mm. all, the, all that stuff. Okay. Not worth so, it, yeah, not, not the most successful of the V. I, I imagine there was a lot of politics as well. You know, yeah, you, we've made these three expensive bombers. Uh, we can't afford to keep them. One of them's going to have to go. You know, the Victor got saved. Uh, was it the Victor? My memory's going. Yeah, Victor, Victor was saved. Yeah, that, that went to um, air to air refueling, didn't it? And indeed, it did. Yeah, the, the Nimrod uh, naval and the Vulcan stayed as the bomber, uh, as far as I can remember. For, until yes, the Vulcan. Yeah, Vulcan was bombing um, and active all the way up into the was it late eighties, I think. Yeah, we had Vulcans uh, early uh, early eighties, actually. Act actual dropping bombs okay so it didn't last very long we know that um uh, okay what was this des design philosophy do we know just well as like i said just to go a long way or at least get to russia and drop one bomb what kind of payload do we have on the thing yeah it was a strategic bomber initially and obviously what well, with the advent of the polaris and subsequently trident uh, mm -hmm. missile submarines um, strategic bombing became sort of i don't know not part of the uk mm -hmm. doctrine Yep, superseded, and yeah, rightly so, I'm sure. Um, yeah, Armament-wise, uh, £10,000, one £10,000 Blue Danube nuclear bomb, yeah. or one B-28 nuclear oh. bomb, or 21 £1,000 um, bombs. You know, we're going to have to, at some point, um, I've done a video on air-to-air -air missiles, done a video on air-to-ground missiles, but just the little ones that you fire in DCS, you know, the Vickers and stuff like that. At some point, we're going to have to do one on nuclear bombs and... Big ass missiles, the kitchens and stuff like that. Right. <laughs> yes, definitely. I've just right. I've made a mental note of that. I know the viewers will love, will love something like that because I don't know anything about it, and I think it'd be interesting. Anyway, sorry, I've interrupted there. Um, let's just go over the basics. How many? We've got four little Bristol Sydneys or something. What have we got? Engine wise, Olympuses or uh, Rolls Royce Avon oh, uh, engines. Okay, that's fine. Same same, same as yep. what was in the Lightning, I think. Yeah. Okay, but non reheat, obviously. Um, have we got four of them? Did you say? We, yep, four of them. Yep, uh, producing ten thousand pounds of thrust each. Right, so it's forty thousand pounds of thrust. Uh, top speed and ceiling, please. Uh, top speed uh, four nine three knots. Uh, service ceiling or uh, fifty four thousand feet. I don't know, like I see, it's painted in atomic flashy white, and, um, as they were to begin with before they got their camouflage. Okay, that's fine. Um, Anything else about it? it? It obviously never saw service, it never dropped any bombs or anything. Um, I see, is that a French flag on the tail fin? It's a weird thing. Anything about cross No, no, that's, I think that's, that's, that's a UK um, mm. tail Better thing. Know that, I? Right, okay, fair enough. Anything else about the Valiant? Uh, no, it was also sort of, it also was used as a refueler oh, um, was, for it? a very short amount of time, yeah. Um, but yeah, not not much more, as you say, not ever used in um, combat, in no. active service. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. All right, let's jump to the Zion Flounder. Now, I've never heard of this aeroplane. I've never heard of Zion. I'm guessing Chinese. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. It is Chinese, absolutely. What do we? I nothing to say on this. So um, far away, I guess. Okay, bear with me. I just loaded up. Uh, it doesn't even look like anything else. It, Mirage 1? Uh, 
tornado. To me, it looks yeah. Tornado will be probably the thing that I would most mm. closely link it to. Yeah. Yeah. Xiang JH7 Flander. So operational history. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, sorry. Introduced in 1992. Oh still wow. In Real new today. Yep, yeah, very, very new, yeah. As I say, still in service today. 270 of these were built. Wow. Good old Chinese. Okay. Engines, we've got two Shan WS9 afterburner turbo turbofans. Now, if I understand this correctly, the Shan WS9 is a licensed variant of the Rolls-Royce Spey engine, which mm -hmm. is the same engine that was used in the UK um, F4 Phantoms. That's so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, dry thrust, twelve thousand two hundred fifty pounds feet each, with afterburner twenty thousand five hundred fifteen pounds feet. Mm -hmm. About the same as the uh, ones in the tor tornado as well. Okay, right. Yep, yep. They, it's, they call it a, a bomber. It looks like an attack aircraft to me, but okay, fair enough. I guess it's a bomber. Um, now, what kind of ordnance we got on this thing? We got payload or something on it? Is that classified? Uh, yep. We've got um, let's see, hard nine hard points, uh, rockets, missiles, uh, anti-ship missiles, anti-radiation missiles, and finally bombs, laser-guided and satellite-guided bombs. Modern ordnance package, by the sounds of it, then. Pretty much twenty thousand pounds worth of external fuel or ordnance. That's that's the total amount. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The wings look like they've got some dihedral to them, almost. Uh, almost uh, uh, Harrier-like. It's kind of a weird, real weird mix of everything, this is. Okay. Yeah, very much. Yeah, very, very strange mix. As I say, most... I, I would link it closely to the Tornado. That's probably mm. what it does. In Doctrine. Um, similar sort of role. Indeed, yeah. Okay, so that's that. Now, out of interest, how high, how fast does she go? Okay, so speed-wise, Mach 1.75. Um, that's quite impressive, actually, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Service ceiling, 51,180 feet. Uh, range, just uh, just 2,300 miles. Okay, so I'm guessing if they attack Japan, they'll, they'll be throwing these things at them, bombing defences and stuff like that. Hmm. I would think so, yeah. Uh, I just... Yeah, interesting aircraft. Obviously not seen much activity. <laughs> um, mm. Yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would classify this more as a sort of I don't know, strike, strike or tactical yeah, fighting that, rather but... than sort of strategic, but right. I guess it being sort of, it's going to be nuclear capable, so I'm guessing yeah. that's one of the reasons why it's on here. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, anything other than, anything else on the flounder? Uh, no, no, I think that's, that's everything from me. Roger, right, well one more, we're down to the end of the bombers now, we've got the Yak um, 28R Brewer, never heard of the thing. It looks very 60s bubble car, it looks Buccaneer, it looks quite cool to be honest. I, I bet it's going to be naval, uh, but well, I'm usually wrong, whatever it is. Um, so I have no idea. You kick off on the brewer, please. Okay, so so not naval, unfortunately. Soviet uh, Air Forces, okay. Defense Forces, uh, medium bomber, reconnaissance, electronic warfare interceptor. Very, very peculiar shape. You can't quite sort of see the shape that you can't get mm. a feel for the shape in, in, in its elevation that you, you see on the picture here but uh, looking at some of the I know, isometric views mm. very very odd shape I see the wings are, uh, there's a, a high wing sleep sweep of about 40 degrees or is that my imagination no that's about right I'd mm. say about 40 degrees uh, and the engines are hugely long as well yeah that is weird are they um, on a nacelle or in the fuselage uh, yeah wing mounted nacelles they are mm. how weird that's a weird plane all right, and uh, when when are we in history? Sorry. So history-wise, um, introduced in 1960, and would you believe retired in 1992 wow. uh, when it was still in use by Belarusia. And I didn't even know it existed. It's, it's, it's such a weird bit. It's got a fighter pilot cockpit almost. It's so weird. Um, it is. It's it's kind of I don't know. I'm looking at it in plan form, and it, mm. and you, it, it almost looks like uh, an ME 262. <laughs> yeah, I bet. What a weird thing to have. And that's relatively late as well. You know, we're not, you know, experimenting with jet engines at this point. They're, they know what they're doing. So, interesting. Um, right. Okay. So, what kind of ordnance package or bomb load do we have? We've got Bombay. I'm guessing that's why they put the engines on the wings. No, no Bombay. Um, that I can see air to air missiles or short range missiles. That's it. it again, what? not information about this. How was it on a bomber page for? Okay. Fair enough. 
Well, it's called it's called a brewer, so it's a B, so it must be a bomber of some sort. Yeah, not much info. I don't think we're. It's weird. It can last so long, and we uh, service so long, and we don't have any information. And it's got a glass front, at least on the version I'm looking at. So that must be for a bomb aimer or something. I imagine. <sighs> yeah, I'm just going through now to see if I can find a bit more about it. That's why I thought anti-submarine. I thought little dude looking out of a window, or maybe. Or yeah, no, they, I mean, it was a tactical bomber, um, tactical bomber, tactical bomber, uh, dual control trainer, reconnaissance, chemical warfare aircraft, spreading and dusting, um, <laughs> all sorts of things. Yeah, it's, it looks like it's been sort of employed in yeah, all sorts of... It looks like maybe it was designed as a bomber, but used as the odd job kind of aeroplane, you know. You can't send a TU-160 to do something, so you send this as an odd job plane or something. Just as the jobs everyone else doesn't want to do. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll just discuss going through uh, Wikipedia. It says Western analysts initially believed it to be a fighter rather than an attack that. aircraft. Yeah, yeah. Very, very strange thing. Okay, uh, have we got any facts and figures about it out of interest? Just um... uh, Yeah, we've got power plant wise, we've got two Tomansky R11 afterburn o turbine jet, turbo hmm. jets, uh, 10,140 pounds of feet dry thrust, or 13,670 hmm. with afterburners. Max speed, 1,142 miles per hour. Axis, that's supersonic. It is, it is. Interesting. Okay. Supersonic tiny bomber with weird engines. Yeah. Um, 54,954 nice. feet is its service ceiling. Hashtag bring it into DCS. This is <laughs> weird and cool, it, isn't it, immediately? It is. It really is. I've never heard of this. I've never seen it. And, and the more I read it, the more I like it. it yeah. Yeah, it's all, it, it matches my expectations of science fiction. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right. Um, I've got no more questions to ask about it. It's just, I've got anything else you want to add that you've seen? Uh, no, I'm just looking at the landing gear as well. It's got these weird outrigger sort of wheels, much like the Harrier, which is strange yeah. as well. I guess that must be down to its, its length and um, the fact that it's the remaining undercarriage was in a fuselage front and back yeah. very 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 interesting it's still fairly big it's, it's the size of an f-15 that's a you know it's a big plane an f-15 is so um hmm interesting cool right that's just done on the bombers then it's been uh, it's been a really good series i really enjoyed that i never thought i'd enjoy bombers so much but i've learned loads over the last four or five hours of videos that we've done about that it's really really cool cool Right, um, I hope you enjoyed that at home, if I found that entertaining, if not very useful. And we'll see you, we're going to decide what we're going to do on the next series now, and we'll see you later.